Part of the fundamental theorem of calculus states that if f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and g of x is equal to the integral from a to x of f of t dt for all x on that closed interval from a to b, then g prime of x is equal to f of x. Or g prime of x is equal to d dx of the integral from a to x of f of t dt, which is equal to f of x. So if you want to, you can think about it like this. When we have a derivative and an integral, we know that deriving and integrating are opposite operations or inverse operations. So those two cancel, and we are really just left with f of x as our answer. You just have to plug in the upper limit if it's a variable. I go into much more detail about the fundamental theorem of calculus and where it comes from in the videos for lessons 6.4 and 6.7. So if you want to stop and review those before going on to this lesson, I would recommend that. In our first example, we're looking at a graph of the function f. The graph of the function f shown above consists of six line segments. Let g be the function given by g of x is equal to the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt. Part a says find g of 4, g prime of 4, and g double prime of 4. First, we're going to find g of 4. If we're looking for g of 4, we're just going to take this function for g of x, and we're going to plug in 4 for x. So we're looking for the integral from 0 to 4 of f of t dt. This means that we are looking for the area under the curve of f from 0 to 4, from x equals 0 to x equals 4. So if we look up here at our graph of f, we're looking from 0 to 4. Let's find the area under that curve. First, let's find the area of that shaded triangle right there. The base is 1, the height is 2, so the area is going to be 1 times 2 divided by 2, which is just 1. So the area for that one is 1. However, since this is below the x-axis, we're going to write negative 1 down there because we're looking for the total accumulated space. Then, to find the area of this trapezoid from x equals 1 to x equals 4, we know that the area for a trapezoid is going to be the height times base 1 plus base 2 over 2. In this case, the height is 2, base 1 is 3, and base 2 is 1. So we're left with 2 times 4 over 2, or 2 times 2, which is just 4. So this is really negative 1 plus 4, which is equal to 3. So g of 4 is equal to 3. Now to find g prime of 4, this is where it gets a little more interesting. So we know that g of x is equal to this function right here. And when we know that when that relationship is true and a is just a constant, then g prime of x is going to be equal to f of x. So we can also think about if we're trying to find g prime of x, we have to then apply the d dx to the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt. And then this entire thing, this just becomes f of x. We just take the x and we plug it in for t. So g prime of x is really equal to f of x. It is very, very important that you write that somewhere on a free response question like this. So then when we find g prime of 4, that's just going to be f of 4. And we can look up on our graph of f and see what is f of 4. What's the value of f at x equals 4? And it is 0. And it also asks us to find g double prime of 4. So g double prime of 4, first we need to figure out what is the function for g double prime. Well, if g prime of x is equal to f of x, then we also know that g double prime of x is going to be equal to f prime of x, taking the derivative of both sides there. It is also important that you write something like that in your fee response questions, defining these functions in terms of each other. So then we can take a look and see what is f prime of 4. So g double prime of 4 is really f prime of 4. This means what is the slope of the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals 4? So at x equals 4, let's find the slope there. We are rising 2, running 1. Therefore, the slope is negative 2. Part B asks whether g has a relative minimum, a relative maximum, or neither at x equals 1. And we do have to justify. So let's think about what would it mean for g to have a relative minimum? Well, if g has a relative minimum, that means that g prime of x would be changing from negative to positive. If g had a relative maximum somewhere, we would know that g prime of x would be changing from positive to negative. And when we say g prime of x, we know that g prime of x is equal to f of x. So when we talk about does g have a relative minimum at a certain location, that means does f of x change from negative to positive. So let's take a look what's happening at x equals 1. Well, the graph of f, which is equal to g prime, we know that g prime of x is equal to f of x, is changing from negative to positive at x equals 1. So when we write our explanation, we're going to say that g has a relative minimum at x equals 1 because g prime, which is equal to f, changes from negative to positive at x equals 1. 
There's our answer. Here is the answer key from the College Board, which I got from the test archive for this specific problem. If you want more practice with problems like this, there are a ton in the test archive, and I've put the link for the AP Calculus AB test archive in the description of this video. The graph of the function f shown above consists of a semicircle and three line segments. Let j be the function given by g of x is equal to the integral from negative 3 to x of f of t dt. This is another situation where right off the bat, I know that if I have g prime of x, I can define that as f of x. Because by the fundamental theorem of calculus, when I have an integral where there is a constant on the bottom and an independent variable on the top, and that is the function for g of x, I can just take the x and plug it into the function f when I'm trying to find g prime of x. So g prime of x is equal to f of x in this case. Part a says find g of 0 and g prime of 0. So to find g of 0, all that I am doing is I'm going to plug in 0 for x into this integral function, into that function defined by an integral. So I'm looking for the integral from negative 3 to 0 of f of t dt. Or what is the area under the curve of f, or the total accumulated space under the curve of f, from negative 3 to 0? So then let's look from negative 3 to 0. We are trying to find the area of that trapezoid right there. The formula for the area of a trapezoid is the height times base 1 plus base 2 over 2. We know that in this case we're going to treat the height as 3. So if we have 3 times 2 plus 1 over 2, that's 3 times 3 halves, or 9 halves. So the integral from negative 3 to 0 of f of t dt is equal to 9 halves. Then it also asks us to find g prime of 0. So g prime of 0, well, we know that g prime of x is equal to f of x. So g prime of 0 is really equal to f of 0. So what is the value of f at x equals 0? Well, since, we, since the point 0, 1 is on our curve, we know that f of 0 is equal to 1. Part b says find all values of x on the open interval from negative 5 to 4 at which g attains a relative maximum. Justify your answer. G is going to be attaining a relative maximum when G prime is changing from positive to negative. So since we know that G prime is equal to F, we are going to look for where is F changing from positive to negative. And it looks like that is only happening at X equals three. F or G prime is changing from positive to negative at X equals three. g attains a relative maximum at x equals 3 because g prime, which is equal to f, changes from positive to negative at x equals 3. Part c says find the absolute minimum value of g on the closed interval from negative 5 to 4. Justify. So typically when we were finding absolute minimum values in a previous video, like in chapter 5, what we did is we made a table with all of the critical points and the endpoints of g. And then we found all the values of g at those points and we would see which one is the lowest or if we were looking for the absolute max which one is the highest so in this case we are going to be a little bit more selective about which points we are actually going to put in our table so we know that our endpoints are going to have to go in there so if we're making our table this will be x this will be g of x our table is going to have to have the endpoints which are negative 5 and 4 but then when we're picking the critical numbers we know that an absolute minimum isn't going to occur at a relative maximum. And we already know that a relative maximum of G is occurring at X equals one because F, which is equal to G prime is changing from positive to negative there. So even though X equals three is a critical number because G prime of three, which is equal to F of three is equal to zero, we're not going to include that in our table. The only X value where F, which is equal to G prime is actually changing from negative to positive. So this would be a relative minimum is X equals negative four. So negative four is the only other value that's going to go in our table. And then I'm just going to label these two. I'm going to say those are endpoints. And then at this point, just to explain why I'm putting these in the table, I'm going to say this is where F or G prime changes from negative to positive. The next thing I need to do is I need to find the values of G at each of these points. So if I'm finding g of negative 5, g of negative 5 is going to be equal to the integral from negative 3 to negative 5 of f of t dt. And now I'm just looking for the area under the curve of f from negative 3 to negative 5. However, I'm seeing a slight issue here. The negative 3, that's the upper limits. That should go on the top. So in order to do that, I just make the entire thing negative, and then I'm looking for the integral from negative 5 to negative 3 of f of t dt. Now I'm going to see what's the area under the curve of f from negative five to negative three. 
Well, from negative five to negative three, I actually don't even need to do the math here. I can see that these are equivalent triangles, so these are going to cancel each other out. We have an equal amount of negative and positive space, which means that the net accumulated space is equal to zero. So g of negative five is equal to zero. Then to find g of four, we are going to take the integral from negative three to four of f of t dt. What's the area under the curve of f from negative three to positive four? So we are looking from negative three to positive four right there. And we're gonna have to be adding up a lot of things here. We already know that the area of this section right here is nine halves. And we know that the area of this little triangle up here and this triangle down here, those are going to cancel out. That's just going to be equal to zero. So now we just need to find what's the area of those little spaces underneath the circle. Well, to find that, let's find the area of this rectangle right here. Let's find the area of that rectangle. And then we will subtract the area of this circle to get the area that's left under there. The area of the rectangle is going to be two times one or two. So it's equal to two minus the area of this half circle here. And the area of the half circle, the area of the full circle would be pi r squared. R is one, so it would just be pi. This means that the area of the half circle is pi over two. So two minus pi over two is equal to the area of this little section and this little section right here. Therefore, we can say it is nine halves plus two minus pi over two. And then we don't need to worry about these because they cancel each other out. We could also write this as 13 halves minus pi over two. So that is g of four. Then lastly, we need to find g of negative four. So g of negative four, we are looking for the integral from negative three to negative four of f of t dt. I don't like that because the upper and lower limits are not where they should be. So I'm going to reverse those and stick a negative sign out front, which is an integral property that we learned in a different video. And then what's the area under the curve of f from negative four to negative three? Well, this is negative four and this is x equals negative three. So what's the area of that shaded triangle right there? Well, the base is one, the height is two, one times two is two, divide that by two and you get one. So the area there is just one. However, since we have the negative out front, that's going to be negative one. Now this is asking for the absolute minimum value of G. So it's not saying what's the X value where it occurs. It's saying what's the absolute minimum value? What is the lowest value it attains? And we know that it's going to be negative one. There is our answer. It did say to justify for this question, but when you're doing absolute minimum or absolute maximum justifications, all that you need is your table. And then if you wanna be safe, a little explanation of why you put the stuff that you did in your table. Part D says find all of the values of X on the open interval from negative five to four at which the graph of G has a point of inflection. So if G has a point of inflection, that means that G double prime of X is going to be changing from negative to positive or vice versa. Therefore, G prime of X will be changing from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So then if we look at our graph of F, because we know that F is equal to G prime, we're looking for when is this graph of F changing from increasing to decreasing or vice versa? Well, it's changing from increasing to decreasing at X equals negative three, decreasing to increasing at X equals one, and increasing to decreasing at X equals two. Therefore, our values are X equals negative three, X equals one, and x equals two. It did not ask us to do a justification for this problem, but I'm going to write one out in case you were curious. If you were asked to do a justification, you could write g has points of inflection at x equals negative three, x equals one, and x equals two, because g prime, which is equal to f, changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa at these points. Here is the rubric from the College Board for this question. And again, if you want to see more of these questions with their full answers and explanations, you can check out the test archive that I have linked in the description of this video. The functions f and g are differentiable for all real numbers, and g is strictly increasing. The table above gives values of the functions and their first derivatives at selected values of x. The function h is given by h of x is equal to f of g of x minus 6. Let w be the function given by w of x is equal to the integral from 1 to g of x of f of t dt. Find the value of w prime of 3. So to find w prime of 3, first I want to find w prime of x. So if we're finding w prime of x, that means that since we're taking the derivative of this by the fundamental theorem, we can plug in g of x for t right there. 
since one is just a constant down there. So w prime of x is really equal to f of g of x. But since we've plugged in a function there, since we've plugged in g of x, we need to apply the chain rule. We need to multiply by the derivative of g of x as well. So that's really f of g of x times g prime of x. That is how we would apply the fundamental theorem. Then we simply plug in 3. So w prime of 3 is going to be equal to f of g of 3 times g prime of 3. Now let's take a look for g of 3. It says in this table that g of 3 is equal to 4. So this is really f of 4 times what's g prime of 3? Well, g prime of 3 is equal to 2. Then we look for f of 4 f of 4 is equal to negative 1. So this is really negative 1 times 2, or negative 2. Here's the college words rubric for that previous problem.